How's it going guys, Vabov here and welcome back to another video. Now in the past couple of days, I focused on Chinese smartphones that deliver gaming performance at incredibly low price tags for great value for money phones, whether that's the Nubia Play 5G or the IQ Neo 3 5G. But one smartphone manufacturer that I sort of forgot was Realme. So Realme is a sister brand of both Oppo and OnePlus, and while it doesn't focus on gaming smartphones per se, it does give you some great value for money. And one of the smartphones I wanted to talk about was the X50M 5G from Realme. This thing is an added product in its portfolio and it kind of confuses the consumer on what to buy, but I'm gonna give you guys my reactions on the specifications and the price tag and give you guys a judgment on whether or not you should look into the smartphone. So as you can see, this is the phone itself it doesn't look that different from any other Realme smartphone to be honest, I mean, it looks pretty similar to the Realme 6 series, if I'm being honest, merged with the Oppo Reno 3 um, or Reno 3 Pro series, if you've seen that from the front panel at least. Now, uh, in terms of the front panel, if we scroll down, we'll get an idea of it. It's a 120 hertz, 6.57 inch IPS LCD panel with a 20 by 9 aspect ratio and a 90.4% screen to body ratio. So pretty immersive in that aspect. Now, if you go back up, you can actually see that this phone has a side mounted fingerprint scanner. So there is no in-screen fingerprint scanner. And that makes sense because this is an IPS LCD panel. Now comparing IPS LCDs to AMOLED panels, I do say that 90 Hertz AMOLED panels are better than 120 Hertz IPS LCD panels. But if you were to compare 60 Hertz IPS LCD to let's say 60 Hertz AMOLED, then the AMOLED is better once again. But uh, 60 Hertz AMOLED to 90 Hertz IPS LCD, I would say go for the IP, uh, go for the IPS LCD with the higher refresh rate. So I guess this is sort of a middle ground, so it's a high refresh rate at 120 Hertz, but not quite the saturated colors of an AMOLED panel. Now, scrolling down, you'll see that this thing has Wi-Fi support as well as 5G support. So I think that's the biggest selling point of this phone, even at such a cheap price tag, it's got Wi-Fi 6 as well as 5G support. So that's pretty cool. And it's based off of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 765G processor. So the same processor that goes into the Nubia Play as well as the rumored LG Velvet series. So this thing is a nice middle ground compromise between sort of the high end flagship smartphones and the lower tier smartphones. So it's great. I don't know if it can push 120 hertz uh, frame rates, especially given the fact that more demand in games require more power. So we'll have to wait and see for that. If you are a serious gamer, um, you might want to go with a higher spec phone. So I guess this not being a gaming phone, this chipset makes sense. Now, if you scroll down further, we've got some more information on this phone's battery. So it's got 30 watt charging, no wireless charging, but 30 watt wired charging, which gets you from zero to 70% in just 30 minutes. And it's a 4,200 milliamp hour battery on board. So that's pretty standard these days. 4,000 plus milliamp hours tends to be the way smartphone manufacturers want to ship their phones. So I guess this is pretty standard too. And this just gives you an overall chart of how the 30 watt power is much faster at charging compared to 15 watt, which might be found on flagship smartphones which are competition to this smartphone. Now, uh, this thing talks about how it has efficient cooling. So it's got some sort of cooling technology and a third generation version of it. I think this is only sort of paper talk and we can only tell if there's a difference once we actually see the smartphone, which I don't think I'm gonna get. So I'm not gonna focus on this too much. Now, in terms of the camera, we've got a 48 megapixel primary main camera alongside an eight megapixel ultra wide sensor, a two megapixel macro sensor, and a two megapixel monochrome sensor. So that's sort of the quad camera setup that we're expecting. It's not gonna deliver the best camera performance, but it'll be enough to get you by for sure. Here are a few samples from the 48 megapixel sensor as well as the 119 degree ultra wide sensor. So as you can see, uh, they're basically marketing this phone to be a good camera as well. So I think they're going for this overall good smartphone approach instead of just focusing maybe on gaming aspects of the phone. And I guess that makes sense. Now, it's also got something called uh, video stabilization. So it's got 4K 30 FPS video. And as you can see, this is how the video of the smartphone performs. Now, I'm hoping they give you a comparison. There's a comparison between the smooth video that this thing has as well as competition that might ha might not have the smooth video. So I guess that's pretty cool. Um, this works on the ultra wide angle camera. And I think this is borrowed from the Oppo Reno 3 Pro series in general. I think that too had an ultra steady video mode. 
And because they're such close companies, Oppo and Realme, these sort of features tend to be ported from one company to another. So this isn't much of a surprise. Now on the front, again, it's borrowed from the Reno 3 series. It's got a dual camera setup, so a two megapixel sensor for sort of depth focusing and a 16 megapixel primary sensor. And once again, it goes over the fact that this thing has AI and it also has HDR support. So I guess that's pretty cool. Um, this is just emphasizing the fact that 120 Hertz makes everything a bit smoother. And these are the two different colors the phone will be available in. Of course, this is the traditional Realme design, the 3D design, and you can get a better glimpse of the overall design of the phone. You can see the speaker system here, the Type-C USB port, nothing on the fact that this thing has stereo speakers, so that's something to keep in mind. If you go for gaming smartphones at this budget, you will get stereo speakers at least, or a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which this thing doesn't have either. More focus on the side mounted fingerprint scanner. Good thing that this thing has NFC because this phone is China focused. This has to have NFC because most of the payment solutions in China tend to be NFC. And I've seen many budget smartphones um, in the international market segment not have NFC at this budget price tag. So props to Realme for including that. And this basically focuses on Realme UI, which again is borrowed heavily off of Oppo's Color OS 7.0. So I guess that about sums up all the specifications. If we go ahead, this is an overall look at everything that we need to know about the smartphone. Two different colors, we've got a bla bla uh, blue as well as a white variant, Dare to Leap being the Realme's motto. And then here is the actual pre-order page. So now we can see that this thing retails for 1,999 Chinese yen. Now, if we were to convert this to um, a dirham price tag, that's around 1,050 dirhams. And uh, for the international audience, a USD dollar price tag of 282.3. Now, a phone that delivers so much at such a low price tag has to have some sacrifices. And yes, it has one big sacrifice, and that's the fact that this doesn't have any sort of Google Play service. So if you want to order this phone, let's say, in an international market, I know this is focused in China, and in China you don't get Google Play services anyway, but if you want to order this on an international level, you might miss out on that. But apart from that, I guess the IPS LCD panel is a bit of a sacrifice, and maybe if you pay a bit more, you get more processing power in a Snapdragon 865, processor but apart from that this thing makes absolutely no sacrifice i'm sure the camera is a sacrifice it's not going to be flagship tier and the 765 modem on there while great for 5g support might not be sort of the best connectivity that you might get on other flagship smartphones that have the more powerful chipset on there but nonetheless this thing retails for 282 dollars and at the moment you can actually pre-order it so you can reserve the phone at the moment once again this page just talks about all of its specifications and it's also got an 8 gigabyte and 128 gigabyte variant this thing has no micro sd card expansion slot so that's something to keep in mind it's only 8 gigabytes of ram instead of 12 gigabytes of ram and the storage on there is ufs 2.1 so it's not 3.1 like we expect from flagship phones which might bring faster performance this is the slower performance um, storage. So that might be something you want to keep in mind as well. So pre-order or actual sales for the phone start on April the 29th. And yeah, that's about it. Let me know what you guys think about this phone. Does it really penetrate the market when so many other smartphones are gaming focused or would you actually genuinely buy this phone? For me, I think uh, investing in a gaming smartphone that has maybe an AMOLED panel, maybe 120 Hertz AMOLED with more processing power, the Snapdragon 865, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and maybe a sacrifice in the fact that those kind of smartphones might be a bit bloated in terms of software makes sense. I mean, Realme OS in general is much cleaner than other counterparts coming from China. So that might be a positive point for this phone. But apart from that, I think this sort of fills the void in the middle ground between smartphones, but not so much as to make it a deal breaker at the end of the day. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments. Would you buy it? Would you not buy it? I certainly want to wait and see if this phone becomes officially available in international markets because 5G smartphones just a few months ago were very expensive and now they're becoming extremely affordable. So having a 5G international variant for let's say around the $350 to $400 mark would be a great sell 
for many markets out there. So yeah, that, those were my thoughts on this phone. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe. This was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.